On today's episode, we are talking about free agent winners, free agent losers, and the big announcement that you've all been waiting for. It happens today. Don't miss a moment. Subscribe to this channel. Leave us a few comments and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. That's right. Extra long for the people. Welcome in to... The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Going to be a great show today. Thank you for listening in. Appreciate that. Yes, we do. Free agency winners and losers on the show today. Some NFL news to talk about that uh, I'm excited to discuss. Mm -hmm. A big announcement. Last week, I mean, we gave you an announcement that there would be an announcement. Yes. Which, uh, you know, as time has passed, that is now, it's time for the actual announcement. You, just, you let me know. Uh, follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, where we will be sharing more information about said announcement. That is, um, well, I think it's time. Okay. Hey! Oh! <laughs> woo! Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for, the announcement. <laughs> Wednesday. April 5th, the very first episode of the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty Podcast. The people have Yo! demanded it. They've demanded more Dynasty content. We said, nay, <laughs> not yet. And then they kept demanding it. And we said, fine, we will, we'll spin up a whole nother podcast where we just talk about Dynasty uh, it's it's launching April 5th. Like I said, right now, there is already a trailer. You can go subscribe. Be ready for it. Get a little tasty taste. So get that intro. Jason talks about the podcast. I mean, that that's the takeaway here. Go subscribe right now. You can find it, the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty Show. Just go find it wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe now. The first episode is going to drop next week. I, I feel like I have been this balloon swelling, and I don't mean physically. I don't mean okay. only physically, uh, but, meta but metaphorically, metaphorically of like just needing to get more dynasty. Metaphysically, yeah. like metaphysically, you're just full of dynasty just gas. Needing to get out all this dynasty stuff, <laughs> and so now we we're gonna. Uh, that's all gonna gas is coming out on that show. And you're gonna love it. So the uh, the show will be a weekly dynasty episode starting Wednesday, April fifth. You can go subscribe right now. It will release next Wednesday, and then it will run through, uh, essentially... Uh, through It will run through July. Yes. And then normally, starting next year, it will be more like a February through July. So, you know, an off-season dynasty, talk rookies, talk startup drafts, talk all of our strategies, things that we have done, uh, what we have learned over the last, you know, whatever, six, seven years of playing dynasty. It, like The format is growing. It's extremely fun, and people can be a little intimidated to get into it. And the, the fantasy footballers, we're not, while we play Dynasty and we talk about it on this show, that's not uh, like that. That's not the meat and potatoes of this podcast. And we wanted to dive deeper. So yeah, now we lot will. Of, a lot of people want to, yeah, like you said, dig a little deeper. Now the format of the show will be hosted by the Borgogan himself. Mm. Matthew Betts will be on the show and a baller. So it's Borg Betts and a baller. That's right. Although in week one, I believe it is two ballers. Mm -hmm. It is. And a Borg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, tune in. Um, the cast of characters will shift around a little bit. But the dynasty, I mean, now we got them off our back. I mean, that's the that's real key. Right. And like you said, we spun up a brand new podcast for all of you. And you know how inflation is. Material costs, very expensive these days. Yes. All of the steel and wood and megabytes supplies and yeah, everything gigabytes. Is, you know, stuck at the docks uh, yeah. to get this show ready. But we, we we did it. Yeah, we got it out of customs, <laughs> and it's coming your way. Tune yeah. in for the Charbonnet Hour Wednesday, <laughs> April fifth. Yeah, yeah, my man, <laughs> that's true. Um, so very excited about that. The announcement has been made. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. 
We are going to talk about this next piece of news for a moment now and then probably more later. But Lamar Jackson has requested a trade from the Baltimore Ravens. What's the source? Lamar Jackson. Ah, that's a good one. He says, quote, in regards to my future plans, as of March 2nd, I requested a trade from the Ravens organization for which the Ravens have not been interested in meeting my value. Any and everyone that has met me or been around me know I love the game of football and my dream is to help a team. Win a Super Bowl. No, he, they just said help a team. No, it's his next oh, does tweet. It, no, yeah, it's, it's, okay. a threaded, it's a threaded t- tweet that goes on a little bit more in depth. But it's funny and that this he, is breaking his, right now. His dream is also to get 200 plus million guaranteed right. and, and help the team. He's got big dreams, Mike. Yeah. He's got big <laughs> dreams. It is, it's funny because when this came out, really, uh, you know, yesterday, it was like starting to circulate that he's requested a trade. You go, well... You know, what is the difference between the franchise tag he's on where teams can go and offer? Because let's say let's say none of this came to fruition, this whole franchise tag, and someone was just going to trade for Lamar Jackson regardless of contract situation. It would be at least two firsts, right? To trade Minimum. for an, uh, an in-their-prime NFL MVP would be two firsts. So the franchise tag that he's on is is almost like an open trade market, except... When a team goes through that process, they are at the whim of the Ravens being able to just go, yeah, okay, thanks for doing yeah. all that work. We'll sign on the dotted line, and you don't get anything. You wasted your time. You wasted your money. You uh, had it wrapped up during free agency, doing the contract negotiations for us. Now you negotiate a trade, and it's guaranteed. You're going to get them. Baltimore would be uh, saying, yes, we accept. The whole situation is a mess. For Baltimore, and we're gonna, like I said, we're going to talk about it more later. The NFL sent out a memo uh, informing all the teams that a person by the name of Ken Francis, <laughs> who is not an agent. Now, the Ken Francis situation, from what I understand, this is a member of Lamar Jackson's group. And so th- th- this is the NFL basically saying, look, this is not a certified agent. Um, Which He does not have the right to like negotiate on behalf of Lamar Jackson. And Lamar said this did not happen. He also tweeted that. Why are you guys talking about this? There's the whole Lamar Jackson situation is insanity. Mm-hmm. The fact uh, an MVP, you could go get an MVP for two first round picks and a and a maximum guaranteed contract, and yet, at least through the rumor mill, we have heard nothing, which is shocking. Well, I, and and you have, you know, Jim Harbaugh saying we want him back, we love him. Um, when he's ready to get back on the train, we're going to, we're going to go. I, I know that a lot has been happening. This is March 2nd. He requested the trade. Mm-hmm. So behind the scenes, you've had negotiations, discussions. Now it's coming out and, and you're using public pressure to attempt to gain some leverage. I don't think it's a, an impossibility by any stretch that they just come to terms and he's a Raven. Um, sure. You know, you, you have these situations where they look bad, they look bad, they look bad. And then Aaron Rodgers signs a two year deal. You know, it, um, like last off season, it wasn't exactly a delight for the Aaron Rodgers situation. So I don't know what's going to take place. It seems like the Ravens are botching this thing from, I mean, is that your, I, I don't know. I, I feel like Lamar is, is botching this and, and not that the Ravens are both, both parties aren't doing great here. And I think it really does come down to the fact that he doesn't have an agent. It's not the usual practices that are going, even like over the last two seasons when negotiations were trying to be done on the normal timeline that his caliber of NFL quarterbacks, uh, you know, are, are getting restructured contracts. Kyler Murray drafted after him, got, you know, a restructured contract. And then as soon as the season hit, Lamar was like, no, I'm focused on football, which is smart if you're your own agent, but it's just not smart to be your own agent at the quarterback position. So I, I, I put a lot of the blame, not, not like, um, I, I don't blame him as far as I completely understand where Lamar's coming from, but the blame of the situation to be so so mismanaged is because I believe he doesn't have proper representation. And you just don't know what is true and what's false on the reports. Correct. You don't know. Lamar says he's not asking for all um, guaranteed money. I mean, he, multiple times he's come out and said that's not true. But then everything behind the scenes, all the reports say, oh, that's what he wants and that's the pitfall of it. I mean... If he doesn't want all this money in terms of guarantees, then I'm just shocked they don't have a deal yet. And we 
we don't know what what is the real Baltimore offer because the one that that Lamar put out there was 130. Like it was a guaranteed up to or 130, and then there's probably some injury guarantees on top of it compared to the Deshaun 200 plus guaranteed contract. Like, so is is the difference of what they're offering and what Lamar wants, is it really like $70 million? Because that's, that's how negotiations just – like, we're, we're done here. We're, we, we can't even have a conversation because we're so far apart. All right, moving on. ESPN's Adam Schefter reports the free agent Ezekiel Elliott has, quote, narrowed his options down to the Eagles, okay, the Jets, mm-hmm. and the Bengals, which brings us to – yeah. Oh no, I didn't know this was coming. The, I didn't either. That's fun. That is let's hear that again. It's the Bijan Minute. Yeah. It's the Bijan Minute, Jason. How how are you interpreting this wonderful Ezekiel Elliott narrowing his options to the Eagles, Jets, and Bengals news? Yeah. Well, In the context of the much more important Bijan <laughs> Robinson. Right, for sure. <laughs> when when I saw this um, you know, the the options narrowed to those teams, my first Did thought one of them was, stand out to you. Well, my first thought was, are these teams interested in Zeke? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's like, okay, Zeke says, I want to play for one of these guys. That's great. Do they want you? And and, and I don't know. Let's say they do. Let's say that those three teams are interested. They have uh, talked to Zeke, and he said it's between those three teams. Um, obviously, if he goes to the Jets, it's yeah. not Bijan. That's Brees, <laughs> baby. And I would be a little bit sad. A little, I a would, little. I would be well. I, I believe Brees would win out, and uh, yeah, I, I do. I think that he would. Uh, is Ezekiel Elliott is not getting some massive, gargantuan contract. I don't believe that. I think that he's going to go to a team, uh, get paid, you know, a few million dollars, three, four million dollars, and sure. But you look at Tony Pollard last year. Tony Pollard was what the uh, the running back like seven or something yeah he was fantastic but i mean if zeke goes to the jets i mean you can take away what six six or so rushing touchdowns for Brees. all that will go to zeke you also Ezekiel Elliott. you also have uh the return of nathaniel hackett who decided yes. that an yes. even timeshare of javante williams and melvin gordon was the appropriate course of action for that team nathaniel hackett is the is the biggest concern for me for Brees Hall in general, with or without Zeke. I, I don't trust him at all. Then, uh, obviously, the uh, the Bijan minute would include the Eagles as a prime destination that would be – I mean, that would be uh, not off the board, but unlikely to invest uh, a, fir- a first-round pick trade-up, which they'd probably need to do after signing Zeke and after you know Kenneth Gainwell – and company, so that would, would you imagine that would take them out of the Bijan yeah, running? They they would not double down and go after Zeke and Bijan for the Eagles right now. the The betting odds have the Eagles the the highest odd, and it's not it's not a um it's not a minus odd, so it's still a, a little bit of a long shot. But the the highest odds of their first draft pick is to select Bijan Robinson, which seems crazy That'll because be that wild. does. I, I just can't That's imagine a, the Eagles organization spending. Would that be pick, pick 10? number ten? Yeah, they're not going to do that. I the don't Eagles are too smart either. for that. I love Bijan. That's not the right play. And then as far as the the Bengals, the Bengals are one of my two favorite destinations for Bijan. This would be really good news for Ezekiel Elliott, I believe. If if they were to sign Zeke and let Joe Mixon go for financial means p ryan is gone a good offense this would take zeke and i mean he should be a first round pick at the end of the first round or and and he won't probably be drafted there because he's been older and falling in drafts i I believe he'll be a really good value if he ends up with the Bengals. uh all right there you go couple other pieces of news the cardinals uh it's being reported they have granted deandre hopkins permission to speak to other teams about a trade I mean, I, I guess I, we knew that they were shopping him. Maybe this is next steps, uh, having those discussions with teams, maybe in particular about contract adjustments. Uh, John Lynch of the 49ers made it clear that Brock Purdy, Trey Lance, and Sam Darnold will all compete <laughs> for the 49ers quarterback <laughs> job. What? Okay, look. But that Purdy John. is the leader in the clubhouse. Yeah, which 
Uh, that makes complete sense when you have a, a player come out of uh, kind of nowhere and be an incredible quarterback for your team and winning. And it like there's a very strong chance that they end up in the Super Bowl had Brock Purdy not been uh, unable to throw a football in a playoff game. But the problem here with this sentence is the fact that John Lynch did in fact include Sam Darnold <laughs> into this like that was a that was his quote. To me that is, is that is bad. Yeah. For Trey Lance. 100%. Because you don't I include think it's bad for everybody. But but listen, listen, there is there is something here. Um first of all, he also said later that um Brock Purdy has earned the right to be the starter. Yes, and he has. But you don't Here's what that sentence to me is, and tell me if I'm reading into it too much. Purdy might not be ready, and saying Trey Lance is the starter is not appropriate in terms of motivating Trey Lance, getting him to take a step forward. Like you, this is your number two pick. You could have just been saying, "Could be Purdy's going to be the starter. Trey Lance has got it till he's healthy, or any any mixture of that." I feel like putting Sam Darnold in there is. Uh, another one of those weird scratch your head moments for the 49ers and Trey Lance. Is yeah. that, Maybe I'm wrong. Is it like the you know like when a when a shooter to get a basketball reference like when a shooter you know they're struggling and they're just like get to the get to the free throw line because the free throws are easy get get back in your rhythm. Is that the Sam Darnold is like the free throw attempt for <laughs> Trey Lance? Just get back to, into your rhythm. Yeah, just beat out the competition. We're gonna give you Sam Darnold. We're going to make it as easy as possible. Just, just beat Sam just Darnold. beat Sam Darnold. And if, in fact, you can't beat out Sam Darnold, then we're going to just release you. <laughs> we're going to eat the dead cap. All I mean, if you, you got to do. Honestly, if you, if you start Sam, Sam Darnold over Trey Lance, you should release Trey Lance. Yes. <laughs> that should. is 100% what, what – that should be in every contract <laughs> for every quarterback. If Sam Darnold takes a snap over you, you are, are granted your release. Because the embarrassment would be worse than you collecting money behind him. It will be a ceremony after the first snap of the game. Like it, it won't oh, be a wa- like yeah, a whole thing. No, it will be. They will put. They will bring you to the center of the fifty, and we will all wave goodbye. Okay, take your helmet off. Yeah, the bring the, the card out. The patch of the the team logos <laughs> ripped, ripped off. off. <laughs> and then they wave goodbye. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, unfortunately, this is. Kosh Anand has had a healthy quarterback one of six years. In San Francisco. Did you realize that? One of was six years. Was that the Super Bowl year? Yeah, he went to the Super Bowl with it. Here's what is insane. We are we are talking about Mr. Relevant, seventh round, final pick of the yeah. draft, injured, who is the presumed starter, if he can get back healthy, slash a Trey Lance who might or might not be able to beat a Sam Darnold. We're, we're talking about this, and yet DraftKings came out with their team over-unders, highest in the NFC. This is- we're talking about a three-way quarterback <laughs> calamity. Yeah, the and number they have one the team, highest win total at eleven and a half wins. That is, that is absolutely insane for a league where quarterback matters so uh, much. That's what we've been saying all along. Quarterback is just it doesn't matter. <laughs> it is that is crazy. But Trey Lance, if he doesn't start, if Purdy's hurt and he doesn't start. You have Trey Lance and, and Zach Wilson might as well be like synonyms for one another in terms of how the team has to approach it because you, the Jets are saying all the right things about Zach Wilson because you've got no choice but to say the right things about him because he's on your team, and that's the same way it's going to feel with Lance if he doesn't There's a this job. big difference, and the, the difference is other NFL teams have, have seen enough of Zach Wilson. Yeah. Other NFL teams haven't seen Trey Lance, and so it's like, oh, yeah, the, maybe you, you – Maybe you want to trade for yep. him. Yeah, We're, maybe. The, 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 I think people would do that with Zach Wilson, too, to be honest with you. Really? Absolutely. Someone would yeah, give someone him a would chance. Get, someone gave Sam Darnold. The Cardinals, they traded for Darnold down Cardinals in traded Josh Rosen for a second-round draft pick. <laughs> Suckers. The, okay, that, I mean, there, there's always the hope when you're drafted that high. And uh, the, or, this conversation is being kind of filtered through a negative uh, lens for Trey Lance. There is still a world where oh, Trey Lance is very good. Oh, he could be t- – we have, we have no idea. We have no idea. He played in a monsoon, and then he broke his ankle. That's what we saw of Trey Lance. And he could be bad and great for fantasy. That is also, that is also an, true. another middle ground. Uh, Broncos, two bits of news I want to share about them. One, Sean Payton said they're not trading Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. So that'll be true until it's not. Mm-hmm. Coach now, speak. No, hold on. Quote, we're not trading those two players. 
when talking about Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. Right. They're not. Tra they are not trading those two. Right. So what, Hamler and? No, he's saying no. One of them. One of them could be traded. I'm just oh, saying if okay. the quote is specifically, okay. we're not trading those two players. If they do trade Cortland Sutton, I was not a liar. I said we're not trading those two. And I then they signed Jarrett Stidham to a very lucrative backup contract. And then when asked about Russell Wilson's knee scope, said, quote, that's something we're probably not going to talk about probably ever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, is, what is happening I hear, Al, in the Al, world? did you enjoy that? I had not heard that, but that's a great quote. I'm going to use that when you come for a race. Look, we're probably We're not probably never, ever going to talk about that probably ever. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have used that. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Jarrett Stidham oh, is a it, he's a high end backup to me, with the amount of money they paid him. So it's just worth noting that, like, for some reason, Jarrett Stidham is like best friends with all the coaches. I feel like. Yeah. They all love him. He did have a very nice end of the season last year. Sure. Mm hmm. Boy. All right. Uh, we got more news. Yeah. DJ Chark, one year deal, five million dollars. With the Panthers. Thank you. <laughs> that means he is the number one wide receiver for the Panthers. Uh, no. Yeah. No, it isn't. Yep. Yep. It, it does. It is. No. Yep. You won't acknowledge Adam Thielen's presence. I despite being paid much more money than DJ Chark. Yeah. No, my, my point is guy. I, I believe DJ Chark is going to be a better wide receiver than Adam Thielen. You want to bet on it? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Water bet. Fantasy points? Yeah, of course. Okay. Per game. Per game. Because I imagine both wait, are going to miss no, time. I, uh, okay, fine. Yeah. I, I think it's I a great... I can see DJ Chark having one game of the year and being really good. And yeah. Then. It's a good signing for the Panthers. Agreed. It's a weird... Yeah, it is. It is a good signing. They'll probably... What, what's going to happen is this team's going to spend a draft pick on a wide receiver. They'll You'll end up with a wide receiver room of like uh, Thielen... Can they? And what picks do they have Zay now? Flowers and DJ Chark, and I think they're going to add somebody. Yeah. I think that's what you do with you have a brand-new rookie quarterback coming in with the number one pick. I think you add – I suppose they, so they still have pick 39 in oh, the second perfect. round. Kyle, is that right? I'll look it up. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But, um, you know, new quarterback. Giants signed Jamison Crowder. Didn't, we already talked about that. I believe we mentioned. That. I don't know. Jamison Crowder on a one-year deal, and then the. Uh, but I don't. What are the Giants doing with? Like you have Crowder, you have Wandale. Mm -hmm. They signed Paris Campbell. Mm -hmm. They brought Sterling Shepard back. Yeah, it's a shotgun approach. It's one to one to the slot wide receiver yes, position. They, they want to. They want to. It's take a slot all, gun approach. All these, yeah. all these little, uh, you know, BBs, and then they're just hoping it <laughs> sprays across the NFL field, and someone could get open it's and so catch the ball. Weird. And then. Uh, Foster Moreau, who I had hoped would yeah. be signing with the Cincinnati Bengals to reunite with his collegiate quarterback, Joe Burrow. He announced he has been diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. He will be stepping away from football. Uh, the only comments I saw on this were from him directly and just saying he's going to work to get healthy and get back yeah. on the field. So we obviously wish him the very best. It was good fortune, he said, mm -hmm. for his free agency period because he was doing physicals with these teams. And that's how he discovered the yeah, cancer. The, I believe the Saints uh, found yeah. it, and so it's uh, good good to find it, and he's going to come back strong. All right, do we have any other news, Brooksy? Not yet. Okay. Well, let me know if anything breaks, and uh, let's take a quick break of our own and come back with some winners and losers. I believe when we first were prepared, you know, propose the idea of a dynasty podcast. You talking about uh, the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty podcast launching yeah. on Wednesday, April fifth? Available right. to subscribe right now. Currently, I, yeah. I think our I, I looked up the quote when we were first asked to do that, and we said, "quote That's something we're probably not going to talk about, <laughs> probably ever." So yeah, well, the the, the, the small probability <laughs> it worked out. All right, let's move on. I did not remember that drop. I liked it. Uh, winners and losers for free agency thus far. We've each selected a winner. Oh, I see. Andy's got a big winner. And a loser. And we're going to talk about those 
right now. Mike, why don't you go first? All right. Uh, my biggest winner of the free agency period, I it's Tony Pollard to me because, number one, Andy stole the answer I would have gone with. <laughs> uh, but that's that's all right. So I can talk about Tony Pollard running back for the Dallas Cowboys. They got the franchise tag, and then they've had to make some decisions for all of the – look. It the salary cap in the NFL is very difficult because oftentimes it seems like it's not real at all. We have these void years where they spread out contracts, but then you get situations like this. Especially, I feel like it happens to Dallas a lot. Like you had the Demarcus Ware situation, you had Amari Cooper just last year, and this year it turned into Ezekiel Elliott, who like he is not young Zeke, but he is still a good football player and can still help a team, but not for well, not for the contract that he was on for the Dallas Cowboys. And like Tony Pollard, the numbers, I mean, last year he was absolutely sensational. You know, third most 15-yard runs, the sixth most touchdowns, second in yards per reception. Uh, per a tweet from our friend Jared Smola, he looked up in 11 games of Tony Pollard where we've seen him with 50-plus percent of the snaps. He's averaged over 19 PPR points per game, which on a season the last two years, that would be the running back four. Tony Pollard is extremely talented. We'll see what Coach McCarthy, like, we'll see if he completely dismantles and defangs this offense, uh, it, moving it to just a run, run, run situation. But Tony Pollard looks locked and loaded. Just He looks so fantastic right now to be a just a true stud fantasy running back. Hopefully he can get a long-term contract, but this is a fantasy football show in, in just one year in Dallas. He's going to be great. It's it, it's an interesting situation for Tony Pollard because to me the only thing they could potentially stand in his way from a headlining season would be injury because we had not seen Tony Pollard with more than 15 attempts at the NFL level until week 10 last year. Like he had never had that kind right. of opportunity before. When he got it, RB7, RB1, RB2. He's great. Um you know, and if they're going to run the football a lot, look, Ronald Jones, probably not standing in the way from production of anyone ever, but also probably not that different on the football field than maybe what Zeke was producing uh, at that stage of his career. He'll have Tony Pollard will have plenty of opportunities in this offense. It will be there is the variable of, of not having Kellen Moore, right? Because. Yes you're going to have a different offense regardless of how uh, it breaks down pass and run. It and, will... and just setting up, like, Tony Pollard is – Tony Pollard's not a Zeke style of runner. He's shifty. He's fast. He's agile. You need to get him out in space. Can Coach McCarthy right. draw those plays up the way that Kellen Moore was drawing him up? All right. I'm going to let Jason go next. Um Sure, save the best for last, because I, too, would have chosen your free agent winner. But uh, to me personally... This one was surprising to me. Devontae Adams is my biggest winner because of what I thought was going to happen this year to the Raiders organization. I figured that they were going to be playing with a the fourth best rookie quarterback going into this season, playing with a Will Levis or someone like that. This is what I thought Devontae Adams' situation was going to be, a very um, bad situation going into an age that you think, okay, he's going to start twilighting. Nothing on film obviously said Devontae Adams lost anything. He was unbelievable last year. I think they made a great transaction here at the quarterback position. Is, is Garoppolo as good as Derek Carr? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Let's say he's a little less good he is not a teardrop down and he is way cheaper so from an organizational standpoint I completely get it he can support wide receiver ones and you have the absence of Darren Waller Darren Waller made a big impact on Devontae Adams last year you had um, basically a split season nine games uh, where Darren Waller was there eight games where Darren Waller wasn't there and Devontae Adams was way more dominant when Darren Waller was off the field. More targets, more receptions, more yards, and more touchdowns per game. He was on a 15-touchdown, 1,700, 
reception pace during the eight games missed with Darren Waller. And, yeah, they signed Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers is a fine slot wide receiver. He's probably going to more replace Hunter uh, Renfro than Darren Waller. Darren Waller is not a a target earner. Darren Waller is a target requirer. You know, he, he is a difference maker you have to throw the ball to. He's gone. So, I, you know, to me this isn't so much things have gotten so much better for Devontae Adams. It's things looked like they were going to be terrible for Devontae Adams, and instead because of this free agency time, he's right back at, you know, he's he should be drafted at the end of the first round, and it'll be worth it. So in some ways, he was the biggest not loser. Yes, that is a <laughs> great summation. He is the biggest. He thought he was going to be a loser. Absolutely, uh, but he's not. My he's own not loser. And I don't have all the numbers right in front of me, in particular for this stat. But the only thing I'll say is, like, obviously Jacoby Myers is a hands guy. He's going to be close to the line of scrimmage. Can Jimmy G? Will Jimmy G do enough to throw the ball down the field? Yeah. Well, he, that's my biggest question. Because there were so many times Adams just disappeared, and then at the end of the play, Derek Carr was willing to launch it. Hopefully. The presence of Adams will allow him to do that, but Jimmy succeeded with, you know, give Debo the ball on a slant and let Debo run it for a million yards. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the Shanahan system is obviously very different. We haven't seen Garoppolo in an air it out type of system, but we have seen Devontae Adams play a number of different ways, right? Last year, 15.2 yards per reception for Devontae Adams. That's actually not been what Devontae Adams' game has been. When he was with Aaron Rodgers, you're talking about a guy who is usually 11.9, 12 yards per reception. You know, just like he is a possession receiver. So maybe some of the big long plays come down, but I think volume even goes up. Well, the, both guys wanted to say the name that I'm going to bring up, which is Justin Fields. Oh, yes. Justin Fields was a very clear winner this offseason. Yes. Secured the starting job yeah. by the Bears trading him uh, – trading the number one pick away. Yeah, he did that. Secured a top flight wide receiver, DJ Moore's arrival in Chicago. Yeah, all right. Um, you know, the team is going to be guaranteed to be improved on both sides of the ball due to the draft capital acquired by the Bears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to be a future fantasy Hall of Famer this year. I mean, You're darn Justin, right he is. Justin Wheels himself uh, will be given opportunities with the ball in his hands and then with receivers that can make a lot of plays. And, um, you know, oh, offensive line is a position I think they'll address in the first round. Their win totals at seven and a half. They haven't seen that in a long time. This is a team that has, uh, you know, Justin Fields is somebody that you might have been freaking out in a dynasty league. Like, um, I don't know, Trey Lance right now. Yes, that's not great. That is not great. But it's over. The The freak out is over. Justin Fields is the guy. Yeah, I mean, a, a couple of years ago, this was Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts, the the, yes. the Eagles had a bunch of draft capital. Oh, would they replace him? They're going to give him a shot. They're going to give him an opportunity. They go and they get him weapons, and all of a sudden he explodes, becomes the, as good as you can get for fantasy, pretty much as good as you can get for the NFL. And now the same situation, a lot of similarities here with Justin Fields, a mobile quarterback that could have been replaced. They had the yeah. capital to replace him, and they said, no, we're going to invest in you. And he's shown enough on the field, like with DJ Moore, with a healthy Darnell Mooney. The the thing I was going to say, the other similarity to Hurts was that we spent a lot of the offseason talking about um, bad, low pass attempt numbers. Mm -hmm. That was a problem. So now you get to see, not that everybody does the same thing. Now, you know, Jalen Hurts, what he did was kind of incredible, right? Yes. All the way to the Super Bowl. But you added A.J. Brown last offseason. And while DJ Moore's not AJ Brown, he's a really good receiver, and getting Mooney back, um, and fixing the offensive line so that maybe he could go through more than one read. Um, so yeah, the parallels are there. I'm going to name some other potential winners. I want you to tell me if you agree. Daniel Jones. He was in consideration financially for <laughs> my. He was in consideration for my winner of. He was like, it wasn't you know just an outrageously fantastic year, but in terms of fantasy, he was the quarterback nine. Uh, you know, 3,200 yards, only 15 passing touchdowns, but 700 rushing yards because he does that in seven on the ground, uh, seven scores on the ground. Adding Darren Waller, like I think it's a it's a big deal. Darren Waller won't be what he was, you know, the when he had the breakout campaign when he be, when he morphed into the Walrus, but it's a huge upgrade for what Daniel Jones was working with. And then 
They keep adding these slot wide receivers. Maybe one of them hits. Maybe Wandale Robinson comes back from the ACL injury and, and he's good to go. But they, I expect we'll see more volume from Daniel Jones after the acquisition of Darren Waller. Well, and Daniel Jones is now, you know, he's going to be the starting quarterback for another yes. year for fantasy. Jordan Love becomes a starter. Jimmy Garoppolo secured as a starter. Khalil Herbert, David Montgomery, Miles Sanders, Rashad Penny. Do you think that those are all winners? Currently, yes. Yeah, it, it's TBD on some of those running backs. Miles Sanders, Rashad Penny, they look uh, – or Miles Sanders, definitely a, a, a winner. But Rashad Penny and Khalil Herbert, those two guys – You're holding your breath a little bit. Yes, you are. Yeah, I mean, it's the, – their opportunity could be incredible. And they could be just – vaporized in the draft you know what i mean they could just yes poof, vanish. is darren waller a winner or a loser uh i'd say probably a winner yeah i'll put him in a win like because Devonte adams is the number one on the team there's a there's a very strong chance that darren waller goes back to being the number one on the giants if you look at fantasy tight ends who are good they are Few and far between, and they're usually the number one target on their team. You know, when when Mark Andrews was the number one target, Kelsey's the number one target. I think Waller has a legitimate shot to be that number one target. Probably should be the number yes, one target for this be. offense. What was the uh, pass attempts per game for Daniel Jones? Uh, let's see. He so he threw the ball four hundred and seventy two times, averaged twenty nine and a half okay. passing attempts. That was pure math in his head, right there. Yeah, amazing, and gentlemen. Yes, amazing. Don't check the tape. Um, all right, let's go ahead and look at the biggest losers of free agency. Jason, I'm going to hand you the baton right now because I obviously I agree with this one. Um, I had put my answer in, and then when I saw yours, I was like, yeah, that wow, that's a that's a bad off season. Yeah, it is um, sayonara to the truthers of DeAndre Swift. I'm not saying he's a bad player at all. He's a very good player, explosive athlete, great running back. But for fantasy purposes and for the people that believe that DeAndre Swift was a top five running back, locked and loaded, he's going to have a three-year stretch of being a top six guy and a real true fantasy football legend, that's not happening. The, the Detroit Lions don't want it to happen. They don't believe that they can give him a workload that is valuable. I mean, you saw that this last year. Even when he got back from injury, I mean, those first two games you were like, oh, it's going to be DeAndre Swift's team. He got injured, like he always does, comes back from injury, fully healthy, off of practice reports. That one week. and That one week. And it was just, it was Jamal Williams. It was, you know, who do we trust at the goal line? Who's the big power back? And the goal line work is going to go to David Montgomery here. If you look at the split between Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift, they do not trust DeAndre Swift. I mean, he had a couple carries in there. They they put him in. He's going to get a couple next year. But the vast majority are going to go to David Montgomery. And David Montgomery's done that through his career. This last season, not a lot of goal line opportunities with Justin Fields and, uh, you know, a, a bat. I mean, they, there's a reason they had the number one pick. They didn't win a lot of games, and they weren't in scoring opportunities quite as often. But the three years prior, you're talking about 23 attempts inside the 10-yard line, 24, 23. Inside the five zone, 18 attempts, 14 attempts. 12. He's got experience in that role. I think that's why they went after him. They signed him. So, to me, the fantasy value of DeAndre Swift is kaput as far as being any kind of uh, you know, massive presence for fantasy I, football. I can tell you that there will be people – and I don't know if I'm going to join them, but are that are going to try to find a way to make the path for Swift in their brain. I think, and I think I, I'm, I, I think I'm one of them. I think I, like I'm. I'm like, oh, is this the time to go buy him in Dynasty? Like the price is so low, everyone's out on this conversation. He's the biggest loser of the off season. Mm -hmm. When you and I, it's probably it's probably a mistake. Mm -hmm. Everything you're saying is probably 100 percent true, but it's hard when talent. And I think this is the position that Gibson was in. I mean, it's so similar. Where it's like, oh, you know Gibson's good. So it's going to work out, right? Talent wins, right? Usually it does. I mean, the like, so last year he averaged 42% of snaps per game. And he was the running back 22. Now you go back, you know, let's to his rookie year, uh, he averaged 47%, was the running back 18. Like, he can be a part-time player and still make an impact for fantasy football. I think what Jason's just pointing out is that that ceiling of where you're like, DeAndre Swift, this is it. 
top five season coming for DeAndre Swift. I just I don't think that that's happening. So Jason, in your perspective, let's you've got him in dynasty right now. Are you riding it out, knowing that he has? Like he has potential upside as as the one being a timeshare, and then if David Montgomery misses time, maybe you have a, a true breakout from Swift. Or are you are you trying to flip him? And, and it, what it, is that? Yeah, I mean, what are you looking for? In it depends on it depends on what you could get for him. There late, are late enough, first round pick the one oh seven. Uh, th those type of trades, when you're talking one oh five, six, seven, that could be a yes, that could be a no. You got, but you can't do it now. You have to wait until after the NFL draft so you can actually see. Okay, Charbonnet went here. Um, the uh, surprising running back went there. Or, you know, or or you know, however the NFL draft plays out. But yes, what I am saying is not that DeAndre Swift is dead and gone, won't be valuable, can't be used for fantasy. What I'm saying is his upside as a workhorse back, as a league oh, winning we're, back. We're not disagreeing. That that is kaput. He's going to be an RB two, and and really, if you look, if you take those first two games out for DeAndre Swift, because he played still the majority of the season, didn't feel like it. Uh, but if right. you take those first two games out, the 12 games that he played, uh, you're talking about a 17-game pace of 484 rushing yards. It's not good. Yeah. I mean, that that's not where he excels, though. He's, oh, he's it, a, he, he dominates in the passing 463 receiving yards. So combined rushing receiving on a 17-game pace would have been not 1,000 total I'm gonna yards. I'm going to put it – I'm going to force you to answer it, though, because the trade just hit your inbox. DeAndre Swift – Somebody's offering you the 107 today. Do you accept that trade? Which do you want? Um, <laughs> I, I, so I think I do. Because you did a really nice political maneuver before. The, I mean, because you're right. If you knew the answers to where everybody went, it'd be easier. But what do you do today? You think you take it? I you, feel you're like 107. Yeah, I feel like the 107 is not getting you. You're not replacing running back. No, but no. You're, so you're you're getting one of the wide you're getting receivers. Getting Zay Flowers where he lands. You're you, getting maybe you're getting Jalen Hyatt. Yeah, Josh Downs. That you're you're getting probably that type of a player. It, it, so Jalen Hyatt is who I have as my seventh uh, pick right now, pre NFL draft. I would not I would not make that trade. And and truly, I think you can get better. There are always DeAndre Swift truthers in your league that will still believe they're it. thinning out. They are thinning out, but it doesn't. It, Dalvin it, Cook or DeAndre Swift in a dynasty league. Oh, oh man! Because oh. I have Kyle and and uh, Jeremy's team over there. Yeah, listening to offers, wow. and I'm sitting here going, "What do I type back to them?" I, I, I've got I, Dalvin Cook on my roster, so I would rather have Dalvin Cook because I want a chance at a championship, and I think that this coming season, Dalvin Cook, I don't even know where he plays, but he has a higher ceiling than Swift. Obviously, if I am not in championship mode, if I am a team that is more in a rebuild, I'd I'd rather. Take the hope of the age of DeAndre Swift and say, I hope he's traded somewhere. I hope he gets a second contract for a different team and gets the because his talent is there. So if I'm not a if I'm not able to win a championship, I'd rather have Swift. But if I'm going for it, if I think I could take that gold home, you've got to make those moves sometimes and actually put your team over the top to to not just make the playoffs but win a championship. All right. For me the biggest loser are it's the Ravens organization. On multiple fronts. Let's start with the fact they don't have a quarterback. Let's let's move on to the fact that they've done nothing to help whatever quarterback they have. Nelson, Nelson Ag Aguilar. Nelson Aguilar is the free agent <laughs> pickup at wide receiver. It's, it's Oh, man, that's so Ravens. Yeah. 30-year-old um, wide receiver, yeah. welcome. Do they have a plan of any kind? They've addressed nothing this offseason. Uh, if they don't have a quarterback, Mark Andrews goes down. J.K. Dobbins, you, I don't want to see J.K. Dobbins not catch passes and not be around the goal line because they don't have a quarterback. This offseason has been really, I think, the worst in football so far. And I'm not saying that, you know, look, if they make a splash, they sign, you know, you could fix it. Yeah, but as of today, I mean, it it's bad vibes everywhere there. They've Their team looks like they're in some weird holding pattern that they can't get out of and that they won't. I mean, right now it feels like they'll never get out of it. You're right, Andy, to bring up like the Aaron Rodgers situation a couple of years ago where it was like it seemed like he was gone, and then eventually they just re-signed him and he won, you know, NFL MVP again. Yeah. But like you have you have current teammates, you have former teammates mm -hmm. all jumping on social media of like, 
bashing the organization. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to be this guy, but everything you're hearing about the Ravens, the way that they treat this position or they they handle this, like, yeah, it's true. It's true. They just don't care. It's it just the vibes are bad, the situation and how it will meander into other talents. I mean, Rashad Bateman didn't even get brought up, right? He's supposed to be running now and going to be healthy. He got brought up a little bit when Mike said that players are complaining about the yes. organization. That's yeah, true. He was one That's of those true. guys. Yeah. So <laughs> That's a good point. I mean, look, it's just a to me it's the worst off-season situation. And um, you know, you will hit a point where even if he comes back, you're going to be a little bit like let's say he's back tomorrow, you still didn't fix the wide receiver position for Lamar Jackson. And that like he played football last year, right? Right. And not having wide receivers was a problem for him then and I don't think Rashad Bateman can carry the load I don't so um and it is weird yeah Kyle you're right I mean Baltimore has been the model organization and something's come to a head this offseason and I don't think I'm saying anything Baltimore fans would be disagreeing with right now the, other than hoping that they get, that it gets remedied the nice thing is that this has been such a long-standing well-run organization that I still have trust that it all gets figured out, that they end up fine enough, maybe not this season, but two years from now. You know, they, this isn't uh, the Browns who like, man, are they going to figure it out? I don't know, probably not. They're the, they're the Browns. All right, Mike, who is your biggest loser of the offseason? Yeah, it's unfortunate, but it is the doctor. It is Dalton Schultz who <clears> – <throat> I mean, Jason, you were advocating of Lamar Jackson needs an agent. I don't, I don't know what Dalton Schultz's agent did, but it's uh, kind of career destroying, in in my opinion, what has happened here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Of the Dalton Schultz was on a true breakout trajectory with the Dallas Cowboys. You had last year where uh, where he was the tight end three for fantasy, which that's what we love. But for, for football, like he was a good player, over 800 yards, almost 80 receptions, eight touchdowns. This year was a down season for him. You know, the numbers dropped to 577 and five touchdowns. But he you had, had all the knee injuries. He was, he was injured. He had to deal with the Cooper Rush experiment. And over the second half after the bye week, like it was kind of up and down. But overall, it would, things were pretty good. But he was playing on the, on the, uh, uh, the franchise tag, so it was just a one-year. He gets you know nearly eleven million guaranteed, so good for him. But that's because they couldn't agree on a long term deal uh, heading in, into last year. They couldn't agree again, and now he's on the Houston Texans, a rebuilding franchise. He will be playing with a rookie quarterback. That's not good for reestablishing your value if you're trying to put up just raw numbers for teams to look at and 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 get goo goo eyes for of like look what Dalton Schultz did last year. Let's get him on the team. And his contract, it is a one-year up to $9 million. Ladies and gentlemen, out there, maybe some of you know, some of you don't. You ever heard of a tight end named Josh Oliver? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was just looking at this. Well, that guy got a three-year deal worth up to $21 million with $10.7 million in guaranteed money. That is more guaranteed money than Dalton Schultz got. To go play for the Houston Texans. And he rejected a deal, right? Because, he, um, yeah, last offseason, uh, well, the numbers we got were it was a three-year, $36 million offer. And he said no to that and bet on himself and whoops-a-doozles because <laughs> it's done. Like, it for, for fantasy football, if you held on to Dalton Schultz, just really, really hoping that Dallas was going to get the extension. You don't see a... The silver lining here? No. I see I do, no, no Brandon Cooks. I see nothing. I see a path of fantasy relevance. We just talked about tight ends to be relevant. Not with a rookie fa quarterback. Fantasy football have to be the number one target. He could be the number one target for this team, but you're right. Not a lot of scoring opportunities, a rookie quarterback. We, we know, I mean, you know, going into last year, I was uh, down on Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson is way better than Dalton Schultz. It was because there was a rookie quarterback. You, they don't 
really sustain a lot of production from the receiving core in their rookie season, even when you're good. There are very few exceptions. Not everyone is Justin Herbert as a rookie. Right. Um, the vast majority aren't even great quarterbacks. I mean, you're talking about first ballot Hall of Flamers playing their whole first rookie season. Usually they aren't that good. So you're right. It's not a perfect situation for him. I think fantasy value-wise, he's not dead and dusted because he could be the number one target. Cool. Where he's the biggest loser, though, is I think there was an expectation coming that he was getting a huge payday this offseason is what they thought last offseason. Does he have, like, a nice place in Houston that he didn't want to <laughs> – I'm trying to – like, a, with a really nice community pool or something? Maybe. I'm just I trying to figure out why. I spend too much on it. I just can't imagine he couldn't have gotten that exact deal with Dallas. Yeah, I, I do not know. Other than trying to save face. That's what it feels like, right? Because if how do you not get a one-year deal with Dallas that lets Zeke go? Yeah, that, I mean, that would... And re, they already reworked contracts in Dallas. It would feel bad, considering you were on the franchise tag for nearly 11 last year, and if you come back to the team, you're like, fine, I'll play one year, $9 million. But long-term, that would have been a much better situation. As I'm, Dalton, shoot. Yeah, it, it sucks. He's a good player. Do we nope. know what his guaranteed money is? We still do not know. Okay, I'm. I'm. That's how good the contract is. The details are still being withheld. I, I'm worried about that. I feel like I'm worried it's going to come out. Three and it's going to be like three and a half million dollars yeah. guaranteed. Oh, come on, no. I hope it's six, but probably not. Oh, man. Uh, other losers this off season: <laughs> Chase Claypool, Darnell Mooney. Uh, you know, Claypool more than Mooney. Yeah, uh, Mooney's a. Be, reason being, Mooney's a great player. Claypool is sometimes okay at, you know, sometimes makes a play. They Mooney I, is a great player. I feel like Chase Claypool. They need to, you you have to figure out how to use him. And and the problem with that is you see a just a a giant superhero of a human being. He's six four, nearly two hundred forty pounds. Ran a four four two. Like so that puts your speed score uh, in the ninety sixth. Uh, or, uh, let me sorry the uh, the eighty third percentile. His athleticism is in the ninety sixth percentile, and you see that, and you go run him down the side, just outside of the numbers, fifty fifty ball. But he's not good at that. He, despite his size, he does not excel at that. But for that size and speed, there has to be a way that this guy can really contribute to an NFL team. But it's not the normal. Put him on the outside. Yeah, and I just don't know if the ship sailed for him. Because sometimes it's hard. these it's physical 20. specimens, you know, you just get to a point. But I, I'm not sure. They thought he was worth a second round pick. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> Whoopsie doozles. <Whoops, yes>. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That is going to do it for today's show. A couple reminders. Number one, Dynasty Show next week. Make sure you go subscribe right now. Just search Fantasy Footballers Dynasty. Um, follow the show. Apple, Spotify. We'll share it on socials. You'll be able to click the button. Follow along. It's going to be fun. Secondly, we are up for a couple of podcast awards. If you want to take a moment this morning. And you do. And you might. You do. You do. Come on. Uh, Come on. Right now, where, where do I go? You go to footclanvote.com. Clickety-click a couple buttons, and uh, you do us a favor. So footclanvote.com for that. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. We'll be back with another episode on Thursday. Maybe I'll have DeAndre Swift on my team. I don't know. We'll Maybe. find out. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.